Amen. Our scripture today is found in the book of John, chapter 17, verse 6 to 19. You're welcome to follow along in your uh, pew Bible, or just uh, read up, 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 up here on, on the screen, or your bi- Bible at uh, home. Uh, let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you. For this, your word, which you have freely and and lovingly given to us. We ask you for your spirit to be with us, to open up our hearts and minds, to receive what it is you want us to to receive, so that we may serve you all, all, all the more. We thank you that your light shines in all places, and pray that it illuminates not only our path, but our hearts that we may know where, where, where to uh, tread. We also pray for your mercy to be on the sermon, that it too might be used by you and for you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. John seventeen six to 19. Hear now God's word. I have made your name, Jesus is praying to, to his father, I have made your, your name known to those whom you gave me from, from the, the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on the behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in in, in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> set apart. How many of you think this is a pretty set? No? You don't like this set of t- t- dishes? You do like the set of dishes? I thought they were pretty. Some of you are nodding your head yes, but are too afraid to really commit to it. Some of you don't like it at all. I don't know. I, how many of you have china at home, like special china, that you don't use except for very special occasions? Yeah? How many of you have grown up with, with parents that had special china that, that didn't use that special china except for very special cir- cir- circumstances? Do you still have that china? Is that the china you're talk, talking about, passed on? Now, what makes that china so special? What makes it special? What's that? That's what they told me. That's what they, they told you it was special. <laughs> so it was special. What sets that china apart from the rest of the... Because you also have a set of dishes, right, that you eat on ev- ev- every day, I, I, I assume. Uh, that, you know, set of cups uh, that you drink with ev- ev- every day. What's different between those two sets of, of uh, sil- sil- silverware, or I mean dish, dish, dishware? Price. Price? One's more fancy, yeah, yeah the, the other one's probably much prettier. What's that? Where would it be seen? Yeah, in the china closet, yeah, 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 you, yeah that, you have a very special place to, uh, to store it. What was that? I heard something new over here. 
Special occasions, yeah. What sets us apart? Can't put them in the dishwasher. Yeah, usually a hand hand wash only. They're breakable. Mm-hmm. They, in my mind, and, and, and John kind of got to it, there's only one true thing that separates this set of dishes, the special china, with the ordinary china. And that is, you would be upset if this broke but you wouldn't be nearly upset if the other one broke. If, if you took out mom's china that she got from grandma, that she got from her grandma, that she got from her grandma, and you placed it on the table and the dog jumped up and knocked it off, you, I mean, we put, the, we put dogs to sleep for all kinds of reasons. No, no, that's not true. That's awful. You would never kill the dog. But you wouldn't be happy with, 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 with the uh, dog. And you'd be yell, yell, yelling at the dog for, uh, for, for, for sure. Because that's special to you. Now, the other stuff, it's not so special. And oftentimes, that other stuff is so strong, you can't break it anyway. But if it does break, it's not a big, big, big deal. Now, uh, keep this illustration in mind as we go through our scripture, because this idea of set apart is kind of moving uh, or bracing our, our, our script, script, scripture today. Now, Jesus is about to be betrayed by Judas. He went up to the, uh, the Garden of Gethsemane, and he's praying. Now, in his prayer, there's three different sections. I believe those are prayer for himself, prayer for his disciples, and prayer for everybody else. This is the section where he's praying for for his disciples. And the main thrust of this uh, prayer is, Lord, protect them. There's a reason they need protected. And the main reason that they need protected that Jesus sees is that in his own ministry, he received God's word. And he's preaching God's word to the rest of of the people in Israel. And they don't like him for it. The powers that be, the the political powers, the social powers, those who are in charge, are upset with Jesus because Jesus is changing things. Jesus is, um, uh, what's the word, challenging the status quo. It's hard to challenge the status quo because this is what we're used to. And so they're yelling at him, and not just yelling at him, but very soon uh, going to crucify him. And they know that Jesus has given God's word to the disciples, and then the disciples will be experiencing the same thing. As disciples, uh, as Jesus leaves and goes up to heaven to sit next to God, now it's the disciples' turn to go and spread this, this, this word. And as we read the scripture, the, the word, word, it plays a very important part. I have made your name known to the disciples that you gave me from, from, from the, the, the world. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you have given to me, I have given to them and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent, sent me. Uh, we skip here a little bit. Uh, I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they do not belong to the world. The, wor- the word that God gave them separates them, sets them apart. Because we in the world, people in the world, live by their own word by their own nature. God's nature and God's word is counter to, to, to that. And so they are set apart, and the world does not like them, uh, just as I do not be, be, belong in, in the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from, from, from the evil one. The Lord wants the word spread, so that more people see that what is, isn't what it's going to be. That the kingdom of God is going to be greater than, than, than what, what, what we, we see. They do not belong to the world, 
just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in truth, for your word, again, is truth. As you have sent them into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. There's a couple people here whom I've married. And in, in the marriage ceremony, we use this script, script, scripture. Uh, uh, John 17, verses 16 to 19. Verses 17 to 19. Because that word sanctify is plays such an important role in our life. Role, R-O-L-E. In, in our, our, our life. The word sanctified means what? Do you, do you know? You know what it means? It's okay if you don't. I'll tell you. It means what? Bathed in, like, like kind of like a baptismal idea. Not quite. The word sanctified, it's a good guess though. The word sanctified means set apart. Now we have another word that means set apart. It's like dedicate, right? You dedicate something for something. Um, and that's set apart for that particular purpose. But sanctify takes that dedication a step further. To sanctify something is to set it apart for a holy purpose. Now, excuse me, in the life of the church and in the Old Testament, there are many things that were sanctified. The temple was sanctified. The furniture of the temple was sanctified. The church is sanctified. The altar rail sanctified. This thing, the, the uh, baptismal font, is sanct- sanctified. Uh, the piano, every piece of furniture you see here is sanct- sanctified for a holy purpose. The chairs that you sit in are sanctified for a particular purpose, for a holy pur- purpose. Did you hear the one uh, uh, about the uh, skunk that uh, went, 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 went to uh, church? He sat in his own pew. Yeah. Yeah. So. so you're sitting in a pew right now, right? Not the skunk kind of pew, but a, a pew, a, a bench. What is the holy purpose that that chair has been sanctified for? What is it? You don't know. It's for what you're doing. For worshiping. For praising God. For, for encountering God during worship. The altar rail, this might be an easier one, it was sanctified for what? Prayer. For prayer. The altar table, sanctified for worship. Baptismal font, sanctified for baptism. All these are sanctified for a holy purpose, and that holy purpose points to God. The reason that these things are sanctified is that they may serve God. Now, did Jesus come to sanctify furniture? No. And sometimes we hold the furniture in higher esteem than we hold people. There are times where if someone is doing something wrong with a piece of furniture, something that it wasn't designed to do, we are more willing to disrespect them than we are to disrespect the thing. I remember one time I was uh, serving a church, and well, we don't have any here right now, but that's okay. Um, I was holding an offering plate, and I was holding the offering plate down by my side like this instead of like this. And I was yelled at uh, by a woman who said, do not disrespect the offering plate. It was sanctified by God for tithing. So do not hold the offering plate down by your side like you would any other plate. Hold it up like this. I'm not sure Jesus died on the cross thinking about how you should hold an offering plate. And we're all guilty of this at one point or another. Can you believe that that little girl is climbing all over the altar rail? They should not be up on the stage. Kids should be back in in the uh, pews. 
Don't be laying on the pew. That's not what it's for. It's for sitting. We've all thought it. We've all done it one time or another, but it's furniture. Jesus sanctified people. He sanctified his disciples. He set his disciples apart for a very holy and specific purpose, and that was to serve God. In the wedding ceremony, we use the scripture to say that the two people who are getting married and promising one another are being sanctified in that moment to love one another as Christ loves them and to be an example of that love to the world. We are sanctified and set apart to show our love for Christ by loving one another. And you know what's, what's interesting about this set-apart thing? Is that if, if you would take the disciples, all the people that G Jesus picked, those 12, <coughs> and you would look at their background, their workers, their, their laborers, their smelly, stinky, foul-mouthed fishermen, they're, they're cheating tax, 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 tax collectors. They're rebel zealots. The, the, the zealots, we don't hear too much about them. Simon was a zealot. And one of the things that the zealots did is they hated Rome above all else. And so in order to disrupt Roman rule, one of the things that they would do is go through the crowd and randomly stab people with a knife. And then they would say to the Roman government, your government doesn't work because people are getting hurt and you can't do and, 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 and anything about it. I don't know, that's not a really cool thing to do or anything. But Jesus yet chose Simon. In other words, if you would take the disciples that Jesus sanctified and set apart for a holy purpose, they wouldn't look like that. They would have chips, dings, cracks. They would be glued together, broken again, glued, glued, glued together. But Jesus chose them, the disciples, uh, the frail, the weak, the foul mouth, to share his love and to give his message to the entire world. And how did, did, did that work, 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 work out for him? Well, we sit here today. Almost 2,000 years later, it worked out pretty good. Jesus knew what he was doing. Not setting apart the fashionable, the fancy, the, 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 the things that are easy to give honor to. I think of the Pharisees and Sadducees, who people bow down to and who they... They kiss their hands and, and, and who they say, look how good they are. Jesus set aside the people who are ignored, who are, are passed over, who people don't like, don't care for because they're not good enough. And they changed everything. Christ sanctifies all of us. The building, the pews, the altar rail, the altar table, the baptismal font, tools. They're just tools. They're tools to remind us that Jesus is with us. If I sit on here, I do so because my back is sore. I'm not disrespecting you. I'm sharing with you the love of Jesus Christ. Showing you that Christ loves you above all else. Above this, above this, above this. If we should wake up tomorrow and this and this and this are burnt down and gone, this would still exist. This would still love Jesus Christ and serve him. This, you, are still set apart to do wonderful things by showing Christ, Christ, Christ's love. We'll use these tools for as long as we can. 
but Christ has set you apart so that you might show your love to one another and to any whom, whom you might meet because Christ has loved you and has loved them first. I share with you today this final benediction. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the, Holy, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and always. Amen and amen. Go in peace.